Uh, another another one that comes to mind for me from the hockey world, actually on a on a similar note of the Saku Koibu thing, was you know Mario Lemieux. Mario Lemieux. I mean, don't. I will. I will. I will. I will present the information that I am aware of. I'm sure there is way more to it and way more uh, that that I even just missed while I was researching. But in the, I think at the end of the 96-97 season, he got diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Which, I th- because I th- there's non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and apparently Hodgkin's lymphoma, I don't know the medical difference between the two. But he got diagnosed and he retired. Right. Now, in 2000, he was on a... Uh, or involved with a group that purchased the Pittsburgh Penguins in order to keep them in Pittsburgh. Now, also, I guess I guess we should state that if you don't know, Mario Lemieux is probably one of there. I mean, he, one of the greatest players. He is one of the greatest players you know that has ever graced the ice in the NHL. I would say he's the second most famous as to Wayne Gretzky for hockey. Uh, for that for that time frame, yes, yeah, I would say. I don't know, G- Gordy Howe's up there. Well, Gordy, I'm just, I'm just thinking Gordy like Howe's names. Beast. Like I would have never came up with the name Gordy Howe, and I, I'm not. Uh, well, I mean, major that, hockey that fan. was also you know that that was probably right. like fifties and sixties too. Right, I'm not a major hockey fan, but when when you have like like the one name in basketball that everybody knows is Michael Jordan. At, Actually, oddly enough, I think Gordy Howe played a game in the '90s for the Detroit Red Wings. I believe he actually Did skated he? in a game, and he was like 80 or something. Well, you—that's you how, both that's know, how badass that dude was. You and I both know that they put him out there just as like a marketing ploy, not really, or maybe even out of respect. But there's no yeah, way I, I, that I he think, was contributing. I think, I think that's more what game. it was—a respect thing. Yeah. yeah. There's no way he was contributing to to the game yeah. on the Red Wings right. at 80. I mean, he might he might have been in his 70s, but he, either way, well, even still, he, yeah. he was definitely definitely had the white hair going on. Right. But anyway, back back to Mario Lemieux. So in, in 2000, like I said, they purchased the Pittsburgh Penguins because there was talk of you know moving the team out of Pittsburgh, and you know obviously. This group came in, they bought the team, kept the team in Pittsburgh. And uh, after, I, I want to say it was 2001. 2001, he came back and played for the team that he actually owned. Also, in 2002, he captained the Canadian national team, I believe, to a gold medal in the Olympics. So was he I, all this player? after coming back, you know, from from basically, you know, Hodgkin's lymphoma, right? So, I mean, hey, I don't. Another thing that kind of struck me is, you know, all these all these older older hockey players, you know, coming back after you know some stuff where you know, like I, I've done enough, right? Okay, you know, and then coming back again. Well, there there's. Something to say about sports where it's the first of all the love of the game, the uh, you and you don't get to that level without being an extremely highly competitive person, um, and then just the com- camaraderie of the yeah. team. Yeah, yeah. Well, where, on team sports, I think yeah. that's a huge thing. You you miss you miss you know, being the, in the locker room the locker with room. other people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a different environment. If you've never experienced it, you would never really understand. Um, I mean, I played a little bit of football, and I kind of felt it, but more along the lines, I would I would compare it to how it was being deployed and living in a tent with, like... Mm. like yeah, uh, that, that's actually a great analogy. Yeah, with, like, uh, what was it, like 20 or 30 other guys for, for, like, six months or eight months straight, you know what I mean? Right. You, you you basically I mean not everybody gets along but you learn how to you learn how to live together and you learn how to enjoy your time you spend with them. Yeah, yeah. On top of that, you know, 
like you said, with the camaraderie and everything, if something happens, you know, you know the whole team's going to be there. It doesn't right. matter whether you like that individual or not. Right. It's it's more of a, you know, group mentality, mm-hmm. I would say. You fight you fight for each other. Yep. You, you yep. work as yep. one. And any team that doesn't have that, that type of uh, mindset is is bound to fail. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So Mario Lemieux. Yeah. And you know, on top of that, he like I said he, he come back and he captained the Canadian national team to a gold medal. All after having I, I assume Hodgkin's lymphoma is a cancer. I know I'm gonna get roasted for that in the comments, but it's I I believe it's a form of cancer. So I I might be wrong on this. Um I thought Mario Lemieux um, had a had a neck injury, or was that Mason Crosby? I, no, I think I think that might have been Yarmer Yager. I could be wrong. I mean, Yarmer Yager himself is a is a miracle. Do you know that he is still playing over in Europe somewhere? And I think he's like fifty years old. To be yeah, honest. he's and over I think fifty. He's, He's playing on a competitive, highly yes. competitive level. Yeah, yeah, he's playing in a European. The man league. is a, the man is a freak of nature. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think he left the NHL, right? He left the NHL and then he went to Russian hockey. I think the, I don't know if he got cut, I, I cut from the. I don't NHL, think it was Russian NHL. hockey. I think he's playing in like a Czech league, you know, Czechoslovakian league. Okay, and and um, he he left and then he came back yeah. to the NHL. Yeah. And he played, I don't know, like three, four years or yeah, something like that? Yeah, I think, I think he played a couple... I want to say he played on the Avalanche. I could be wrong. But yeah, I think he played like two or three years. What, he wasn't on the Capitals? I, I don't know if that was his time frame or not. I, I don't know, I, I'd have I, to look into I think into he did it. play on the Capitals. I'm not sure. sure. So he went I, I, I do Pittsburgh. believe at some point he did play on the Capitals, but I'm not sure if that was in this stint, is what I'm saying. So, but here, here, here's my pondering. Do you think that he had to take something that he probably shouldn't be taking to be able to compete for as long as he has? Uh, I, like some HGH or something I, along that okay. line? I, I can tell you right now from experience, playing hockey, if he's taking anything, he's taking painkillers. Painkillers? Hockey is a rough, tough sport. Well, here's the thing with, like, with HGH and and certain drugs is that your body recovers faster. It kind of like reverts you back to like a younger form of body of yourself where your body heals faster and you you can play stronger. I mean, you know, maybe, but I, I, I no, I, I don't see, I don't, I don't think, unless you're like an enforcer or anything, I, I don't really think you're, you know, using any type of, you know, growth hormones or anything like that. Steroid. I mean, yeah. I mean, steroids is a, steroids. Steroids is, is different. different. Yeah, but I, like I said, like but, I said, unless you're an enforcer, I, I don't think I don't think many of them players out there or HH is more of like a thing where your your body's natural revitalization is basically sped up. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I need some of that. <laughs> if you out there have a Access to HGH. Let us know down in the comments below. It doesn't make you stronger, but... (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Uh, Greg Greg wants drugs. Give Greg drugs. Give Greg drugs. (laughs) Drugs are bad and (laughs) kind. There's a PSA for that. For that episode. (laughs)